Jesus, we thank you. Jesus, we thank you. Jesus, we glorify you. It's been by your grace and your grace alone. It's been by your mercy and your mercy alone. Mambra Catala Babadus, Avaria da Babadish, Rocco Tolo Bodosh, Kebedegadish, Rocco Tolo Bodosh, Kebedegadia da Varia da Babadusha, Rembre Catele Bedegadus, Tabaran de Gedegadusha, Lambra Catala Babadus, Kebedegadus, Landria Gedele Bedevesh, Kebedegadus, Ricatala Babadus, Kebedegadus, Kebedegadus. Riprobodoski varande gede 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 sha robi andala baba baba dushke vede gedi sa yembre ketele bebe be du ko du ko du sha ramba thala bu ko du lo bo dushke vede gede sha riba dam binda la banda la baba dasha rebe de ge du ko dushke vede gedi skala baba dia baba dusha rebe de le bebe de be sha de le bebe de be le de be sha de le bebe de sha Ribala Baba de la Bebe de Vedesha de la Bebedes, Bricatala Baba de la Bebe Vedesha, Rombo do Bodosh, Kebede Gedesh, Longoria Bandolo Bodoro Bodo Bodosh, Rebe de la Bebe de Vesha Vele de Bebedus, Ricatala Baba Babadosh, Kebede Lebedia Dosha. We bless your name, Jesus. We give you praise and glory. Be thou exalted, Lord. Be thou magnified, Jesus. Zibarika di Baruko do Borike de Basitara. Rika no sakitaria da la babadia bogonti adaha, rebe de ge zubrandele gedisha, rege de vesebele gedusha. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be your name. Thank you for 15 days gone. Thank you for the last day of this crusade. We give you praise. It has been by your grace and your mercy. Only your grace has made this possible. Only your strength has made this possible. Only your enablement has made this possible. You are the reason why we have been preaching for this 16 day, for this 15 days past. And we are still preaching on the 16th day. We give you praise and glory. You are the reason for everything. We bless you, Lord. We glorify you. We magnify you. Be thou exalted, Lord. Be thou glorified, King of glory. Be thou magnified, everlasting Father. We bless you, Lord. Be thou lifted up, Lord God Almighty. In the name of Jesus, we have thanked. Amen. Lord, we bless and appreciate you. We give you all the praise and glory. We give you all the honor and thanksgiving. We say, be thou exalted forevermore. Be thou glorified. Be thou lifted up. We bless you, Lord, for your grace that has sustained us. We thank you for your grace that has enabled us. We thank you for 15 days gone. And today, the last day, we give you praise and glory. We give you honor and thanksgiving. We say, be thou exalted in the name of the Lord Jesus. Lord, we thank you for how you have helped us this these all through it has been by your mercy and your grace we say blessed be your name forever in the name of jesus Amen. we thank you for this last day your word says better is the end of a matter than the beginning thereof we thank you for today is better than even the first day in the name of the lord Amen. jesus we thank you lord the bible says and on the great day of the feet that jesus said everyone that tests come to me and drink we thank you for everyone that, that, that shall come in this meeting. They shall drink of your living waters Amen. in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Holy Spirit, we recognize your presence. We ask that you glorify Jesus. Take all the glory in this meeting. Let no flesh glory in itself. Thank you, Lord God Almighty. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we have prayed. Amen, Amen to Jesus. Amen. We thank God for 15 days gone from this crusade. And this is the final day of the crusade, the 16th day. We give God all the praise and glory. Amen. We give him all the honor and thanksgiving. It has been by his grace and his mercy. No man did this. No man can do this. Nobody did this. God alone and God alone did. And to him be all the praise and glory forever. Amen. I trust God that we have all been blessed thus far in this crusade. And I trust God that we have received instructions. We received admonitions. We received um, the, the, the relevant revelation we need 
to, to kickstart our 2021 in the most glorious way. Amen to Jesus. Amen. 2021 is the 21st year in the 21st century. Uh, we, we, we know that this doubly loaded year has a lot lined up in it and a lot of great things loaded in it. Praise God. Amen. But like we have always been told that marriage is an empty box. You, you, you come into it as an empty box and what you put into it is what you get out of it. Same applies to 2021. 2021 is an empty box. You enter into it as, as and it's an empty box. But what you put into 2021 will determine what you get out of 2021. Like the computer language says, garbage in, garbage out. What you put in is what you get out. So 2021 is waiting for us to put in everything we can put in to get everything we need from it. Praise God forevermore. Oh, yeah. 2020 was a very crazy year. And um, the devil and his agents, they started planning for the year time before now and even 2029 they gave us a hint of their plans for the year praise god they took the church of jesus by surprise it took christians by surprise and um it, it it led to a lot of us um experiencing some losses in time and every of that but i have good news for you that when they hit they said that like they say once beaten twice shy when someone throws a punch at you the first time, it's a wise, it's a wise signal for you to know how to prepare for the next punch. Praise God forevermore. Mm -hmm. And by the grace of God, I believe that the church of Jesus is getting very prepared for 2021. We are not just training fireworks. We are, we are releasing fire and we are working. Amen. Amen. We are releasing fire and we are working. Amen. The devil cannot have a few days in 2021. Amen. That's the reason why we are releasing fire on the altar of prayer, on the altar of consecration, on the altar of fasting, and then we are working. Never before have we have I been in a fast in the month of November all through my ministry years. Praise God, even in my personal work with God. But this year, the Lord made me made us going to a fast in the month of November, and then December also twice a week I was fasting by the privilege of God's grace, preparing for what God has for 2021. 2021 is a heavily loaded year. Praise God forevermore. And I believe God so strongly that we are already sniffing the great things that God is set to do in 2021 glory to god forevermore i want to admonish us that every one of us who partook of this crusade and those who didn't partake of the crusade do well to to go to the to to our uh, um, online radio anchor radio um, grace life pastor chimdi Ohahuna, and um listen to all the teachings that have been taught in the course of this crusade they have been most impactful and please Make the most of them. Listen to them again and again and get to hear what God has for you. Praise God forevermore. Today I'm going to be closing this crusade by the help of God's grace with the third part of our teaching, the lost but found kingdom. Amen. Amen. The third part of our teaching, the lost but found kingdom. And I believe it's going to be a most glorious time. Amen to Jesus. Amen. And it's subtitled, How to Enjoy God's Pro Kingdom Provision. How to Enjoy God's Kingdom Provision. Um, um, 2021 has a lot of a lot of God's provisions in it. Amen to Jesus. Amen. God has provided a lot in, for us to enjoy in 2021, but we have a responsibility to do our own part to ensure that we enjoy all of God's provision. Praise the Lord forevermore. We, we took time to understand Matthew 6 verse 33 in, the, in our previous teachings. Amen. Amen. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and everything shall be added unto you. We understood what the kingdom of God is. We understood that the kingdom of God is Jesus. He's the full content of the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is the rule and reign of God. And we, we saw that the rule and reign of God was made manifest in the person of Jesus. Praise God. And we understood that seeking first the kingdom of God is seeking Jesus as our priority, seeking to know him more as our priority, our topmost priority being knowing Jesus more and knowing, having a full revelation of his righteousness, which is who we are. Praise God. So that means as we seek to know more of Jesus, we definitely get to know more of ourselves because we are the righteousness of God in him. We understood that in the previous teachings. Amen to Jesus. Yeah. And um, now we are going to be, we are, since we understand what it means to, to, to seek first the kingdom of God, today we have, to, we have to understand what it means to manifest the kingdom of God. Praise God. It's not enough to know. It's not enough. Because one of the problems I have with the church of Jesus is that many of us know, but many of us don't do it. 
and the church of Jesus is experiencing so much spiritual constipation. And you see churches filled up, denominations filled up with people who by right are meant to be out there making impact, manifesting the kingdom of God, but they are doing little or nothing to manifest the kingdom of God. And then it seems like darkness keeps covering the world. That is the reason why darkness covers the world so much because those who are meant to manifest the kingdom of God are not manifesting the kingdom of God. We have many religious people who don't have a revelation of who Christ is and who don't have a revelation on how to manifest the kingdom of God. Praise God. And the end time move of God is not more religious people. The end time move of God is not more scholarly people. The end time move of God is people who have a revelation mentality and a manifestation mentality. Praise the Lord forevermore. Hallelujah, Hallelujah to Jesus. Amen. So the world has been long awaiting, uh, awaiting the manifestation of the sons of God. As told us in Romans 8 verse 19, the Bible says in Romans 8 19, for the endless expectation of the creation waited for the manifestation of the sons of God. The world, the creation is waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. Every chaos you see in the world today, every challenge you see in the world today, the solution to the challenge and the chaos is the manifestation of the sons of God. So, so long as we stay unmanifested, the problem persists. So long as we stay unmanifested, the chaos continues. Praise God forevermore. Amen. Hallelujah to Jesus. And, and, and the reason why the word, the NS expedition of the creation of the meeting for the manifestation of the sons of God is because our manifestation is yet to be felt by the earth. Mm. Our manifestation is yet to be felt by the cosmos. Our manifestation is yet to be felt by the environment. Praise God forevermore. Mm. And, and you see, the, the, the challenge is so much because even those who are doing their best to manifest, the, 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 the kingdom of God, we discover that their best is not still enough. Amen to Jesus. Amen. It's not enough. Because when you have a thousand lights and only ten are shining, you are not giving the best of that light. Are you get what I'm saying? Yes. When you have a car, and like somebody says, like some mechanic to tell you, when you have a car and you have not gotten, you drove the car all his life and you never took it to its maximum speedometer, you didn't, you never, and you never made the car maximize its potentials. Praise God forevermore. Uh, um, I remember Dr. Masboro said once he was traveling on the road, but in that road, there is no speed limit. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. There is no speed. I, I think it is in Germany, there's no speed limit. And he said he, he was, he was, he was firing his car. He was already gotten to like 250 or there, but he was firing his car. And from nowhere, he, he saw a car passing, zoom, and I'm like, whoa, is this real? Now, that road, the purpose of that road is to make you take your car to its limits. To make you fully maximize your car. And he said, in that road, he, can, he understood what purpose meant. And you get what I'm saying? Children of God, many of children of God die without manifesting the kingdom of God. They die without stretching themselves to their maximum limit. There's so much God that's deposited in us. And until we push ourselves to our maximum, we can never know how much our environment can benefit from what God has deposited on inside of us. Praise God forevermore. And so the earth is not feeling us. The creation is not feeling us. And that's why the creation is still groaning. Now, when you see natural disasters, when you see death, when you see every e e evil in the land, the reason for the death, the evil, the natural disasters is because the creation is groaning for the manifestation of the sons of God. Are we together? Yeah. yeah, we need the sons of God to manifest. And then in an environment, because a man is there, because a principality is there, some things cannot happen there. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. That's the kind of Christianity we are looking for. Not argumentative essay. Not dogmatic theoretical jargons. That's not what we are looking for now. We are looking for Christians who will manifest as principalities here on earth. Praise God forevermore. That is what the earth is crying for. Christianity in recent times is getting full of more theories and knowledge with fewer results to match. Go on social media. You see people, you see people arguing theories and knowledge with no results. You know, it's most painful when you see children arguing with their fathers that have results and they have no results. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yeah. You see somebody teaching somebody ministry who has never done ministry in his life. He has not done half day of ministry, yet he's teaching somebody who has been doing it for 40 years how to do it and telling him his way is wrong. You see somebody who has not, who has not, who, who God has not used to even heal headache, telling somebody that God has used to heal diverse kind of diseases that his approach towards the, uh, the healing ministry is not right. Praise God forevermore. Hallelujah. So this is the challenge we have in the recent times. Praise the Lord forevermore. Hallelujah. And this challenge is seriously affecting the church of Jesus. It's affecting the church of Jesus seriously. 
And uh, the, 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 the earlier we address this challenge, the better for us. Praise God forevermore. Hallelujah. The better for us. And so that's the reason why as the, as the year comes to an end, we must understand what the manifestation of the kingdom of God is all about. We have to understand it because Christianity has become so theoretical, so theoretical and so dogmatic and is affecting our impact on earth. Now imagine what happened in 2020, how crazy 2020 became. And when the, 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 when the coronavirus outbreak came out, when they began to shut the, uh, close the doors of churches, all we had was arguments among Christians. Arguments among Christians. Uh, some of this side, some of the other side, some saying the church is not a building, some saying that you don't need buildings to, 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 to worship God. Why some saying you need, you, you, if you don't need buildings, why did you start up building at all? So it became a, a, a clash between the food and Jesus says, and he said, if the, if, um, um, he said, he said, if, um, when a kingdom is divided, it cannot stand together. Praise the Lord forevermore. Hallelujah. And the devil understood this game plan. So he brought about confusion and clashes amongst us. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And with that, the devil plays a smart game among Christians, among the saints. All he does is look for a, a, a way for us to begin to clash with ourselves. Once we start clashing with ourselves, he keeps us busy and he continues his work. So make them argue. Make them talk. Make them fight themselves. And that's all they need. Just let them do it and we continue our game plan. But the ex is still waiting for songs of God to manifest because instead of man off manifesting, we are rather arguing. A church of Jesus has turned into an argumentative church, a theoretical church, a, a dogmatic church that they, we argue what is relevant and what is irrelevant to the extent that we will begin to argue with other religion. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now, it's good that we know something that Jesus did before he taught. Yes. Jesus did before he taught. In other words, he, he, he acted before he taught. Praise God. Hallelujah. This makes us understand that his actions preceded his words. Or rather put, his words were action loaded. Acts chapter 1 verse 1 says, says this, says, The former treatise have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach. Now, the one thing about the, the Bible is that nothing is put there by coincidence. All scriptures are given by inspiration. So every, every phrase, every sentence, every word came according to divine precision and perfection. Mm -hmm. And you get what I'm saying? Yeah. So the Bible says what Jesus began to do. He should have said what Jesus began to teach, then he began to do. And you get what I'm saying? Yeah. But it says what Jesus began to do, and then what? He began to so this makes us understand that Jesus' his action preceded his words. But today, the church of Jesus we have today is a church that our words precede our action. Mm. We talk so much and do so little. In fact, and do so nothing. And the generation of Christians we are having cropping up today, I'm afraid for them because we may raise up a generation that is so worded but so, so empty when it comes to actions and results. Mm. How much did Peter know? Little to nothing, an illiterate fisherman, turn full of Jesus. But when he was face to face with, 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 with the lame man, all he, told, all he told him was, silver and gold I have not, but what I have I give unto you. In the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. We need a generation that is action loaded, not word loaded. I'm not against teachings. I'm a teacher of the word of God by the privilege of God's grace. But over the years, I've learned in my work with God that teachings alone do not raise a vibrant church. A church that will be vibrant, a church that would that, that, that the earth will respect is a church that acts before it teaches. By the privilege of God, I've seen God do great miracles in my ministry from inception to date. And he keeps doing great miracles. So I don't just believe in talking. I believe in actions. As I'm not in a hurry to judge people, I believe in actions. And the, the, the creation is waiting for action-oriented Christians, not talkative Christians. While we were talking, they closed down the, 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 our church buildings. While we were talking, they gave us assignment to argue with ourselves. Same strategy, the same strategy. And now they are still allowing us to talk while they are, while they are walking on the ground. I know the, the, the funny thing, the force of darkness, they don't argue, they don't argue theology. <laughs> they don't even want theology to argue. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They don't argue theology. They don't argue dogma. 
They don't argue, argue thesis. It's only the children of Jesus that picks up the Bible and we argue here and there. Praise God forevermore. Jesus was action oriented. Jesus also showed himself alive to his disciples after his resurrection with many infallible proofs, not just proofs. The word infallible means undeniable. Acts chapter 1, verse 3 says, To whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them 40 days and speaking of the things pertaining the to the kingdom of God. Now, this was this was um, the, um, Luke the physician, which we believe that Luke wrote the book of Acts, and he was writing to to, to, to Theophilus, to, 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 to Theophilus, um, 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 and Theophilus was an honorable man who had heard various things about the church, and he had heard that um, the church, these, these, these followers of Jesus, they were miscreants, they were troublemakers, and they were, they, were they, they, were, they, they, were, they, they were terrible people. And then Luke had to put things straight to him, and he wrote to Theophilus. But how did he start of writing to him? That's why the book of Acts is, 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 is a rendering of all that was happening in the church, the actions in the church. Because Theophilus, um, Luke would have not been able to communicate anything to Theophilus if we are just telling Jesus is good, Jesus is alive, you know, according to the theological background of Jesus or what the prophet said. Theophilus is not ready to listen to what the prophet said. Theophilus is ready to listen to what? What is the proof that these people are genuine? Are you getting what I'm saying? What is the proof that these people are not miscreants as I'm hearing? What is the proof that these people are not troublemakers as I'm hearing? What is the proof that these people are not pestilent people as I'm hearing? So he needed actions to prove it. And that's how when, when Luke was running to Theophilus, he began to show him the actions that had been happening at the church. And he started by telling them what Jesus began to do and began to teach. Now, he told them what Jesus did and taught in the three and a half years of Jesus' ministry. But he went for that to tell him in the 40 days that Jesus had on earth before he ascended, he showed himself by not just proofs, but what? Many infallible proofs. So we did 40 days. What Jesus did, that's why the Bible says that the miracles he did, no book can record them. Yes. That means those things he did in that 40 days, they didn't even record them because they were mind-blowing. They were many infallible proofs. We serve a Jesus who in 40 days, he could show himself to be alive with proofs that were mind-boggling, proofs that were undeniable. And today we are a church that has no proofs and we are making so much noise. The earnest expectation of the creation is not waiting for noise makers. The earnest expectation of the creation is waiting for many infallible proofs carriers. Now, let us leave these plenty theories we know. Let us leave these plenty theology we know. Let us leave these plenty analysis we know. It's good. Exegesis is good. I'm a teacher of the word of God. I'm a student of the word of God also. I like exegesis. I like analysis. It's good. All these things are good. But let me tell you, this world we are living in now is no longer looking for exegesis. It's no longer looking for analysis. It's looking for proofs. Proofs. When Thomas went to India, and he was, he, 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 after, after saying, I want to be sure, they told him just my life, he said, no, I want to have my own revelation of Jesus. Proofs. Until I put my hand in his palms where the nail entered and his side where the, where the spear entered, I would not believe. Let me have my own proofs. See, we, have, we need a generation of Christians who will say, Lord, give me my own proof. Let me have my own revelation. And when that happened, Thomas said, my Lord and my Master. Amongst all the disciples, when the, Jesus resurrected, no one called him Lord and Master. But when Thomas had his own proof, he called him my Lord and what? And Master. And with that singular proof, he entered India and was preaching to some to the Indians who were who were who were doing a festival in that in that in that season, and they were doing it naked in in in, in a river, dancing to their to their to their idol. And while he was preaching to them, nobody was listening to him. And he told one of them, "Get me a, a bucket of water and a, 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 a bowl." And he got him a bowl. And he took the bowl up and he took the bowl and scooped water from the river. And he threw the water into the air and commanded the water to suspend in the air. As the water suspended in the air, they said, now, what are you saying? And he said, now I'm saying something. And they listened to him. Same Thomas was speared to death on the mountain in India because of the proof. Many infallible proof. For those 40 days, after Thomas saw and believed, for those 40 days, he was watching the, the mind-boggling proofs that Jesus was giving to them. And after those 40 days, those guys were on fire. 
let me tell you something. Those people had a, they, 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 they saw Jesus physically on earth. But let me tell you something. We have a better opportunity, and that is the revelation of Jesus through his word. That means we can command more proofs than even that they, that they commanded. But the church of Jesus today is giving to theories than giving to proofs. And that's why the NS Revision of Creation is still waiting for us. And the kingdom of darkness is taking advantage of our laxity to perpetrate more evil. My, one of my pastors told me a story was of a particular young man who was preaching to somebody and telling him to get born again. The person, the person said, he, the person said, I will not get born again. There's nothing you say that made me get born again. Except I see a sign. He said, you want to see a sign? He says, you are sure you want to see a sign? He says, yes. He put his hand on the man's back and said, Father, in the name of Jesus, I command a sharp pain to get into his back now. And the man said, hey! Ah, please remove it, remove it, remove it. It's too painful. He said, Will you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior? And I said, Yes, I accept. Yes, I accept. Now, this thing is real. And he said, Okay, now say this prayer after me. He led him out. He asked for a sign. He was a Greek Christian, he was a Greek personality. And he prayed, led the man to Christ. And as he led him to Christ, he said, Lord, in the name of Jesus, I command this pain to be off his back. And instantly the pain left his back. The man never needed any other sign again to follow Jesus. Are you getting what I'm saying? That is the generation that we are looking for in this end time. That's the army that we are looking for. Praise God forevermore. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Apostle Paul said in 1 Corinthians 2, verse 4, he said, and my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and power. It is believed that Apostle Paul was a long talker. He talked for long hours. It was not, and it was not an exciting talker, as it were. He did not use the homiletical and hermeneutical approach to his preaching. Why? Because he was a lawyer before who was good in the, in, in, in the maneuvering of words. But when he had an encounter with Jesus, he knew that he didn't need those legal techniques to communicate this gospel. So he gave it raw, raw as he was preaching. So he, he could talk for long hours. Remember the Bible, they say there was a time he was talking and there was a particular man who was sleeping up the window. He fell asleep in the window. And the man fell from up the window down and Apostle Paul came out and laid hands on him and the man died and he laid hands on him and the man came back to life and he went back and continued preaching. If it had been our time he would have said, oh, because my message is too long that's why this guy slept and fell down and died. So let me and that's a sign from God for me to end my message but for him, that was a sign from God to him to, to release the power of God and get them more hungry for more word. Mm. Different understandings as to the signs we see. He said, my words were not enticing words of men's freedom. Uh, 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 Paul, because of this, he said, my words were in the demonstration of the Holy Ghost and with, and with power. So his, 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 his ministry was synonymous with demonstration of power. Power. His ministry was raw power. See, this, uh, this 21st century and the 21st century, 21st century will not submit to anyone who is a theorist. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yeah. Child of God, theorism will not work in 2021. The devil is all mad. He's ready for new missiles. In 2021, you need power. Raw manifestations of the power of God. Are you getting what I'm saying? Raw, raw, raw. Raw manifestations of the power of God. Where the world you have eaten becomes your reality. That's what we need now. And that's what the earth is waiting for. The earth is tired of theorists. So power is a major component of the kingdom of God. Ecclesiastes chapter 4, 8 verse 4 says, where the word of a king is, there is power. And the Bible says in Revelation, say you are kings and priests. So how can you be a king and your word is still powerless? I remember when somebody called me, I was on my, I was about to sleep at about 10 p.m. That night, I was ready on my bed, about to sleep, and she called me and told me, she said, Pastor, my boss is troubling me. This man is troubling my work. He's troubling me. She was so perturbed and disturbed to the extent that she even said, I said, so what do you want God to do for you? She said, if he has to die, I said, let him die. But anyway, let him live, man. Let him just, I don't want him again. And on the, I didn't stand up. On the bed, I passed a decree. On the bed, about to sleep, I passed a decree. And the next thing we heard was that they transferred the man. That's what we are talking about here. A young lady, in, 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 she was a teenager, and her first period was the first sign to marriage. And the man who was about to get married to her was ready to get married to her. And she called me and said, Daddy, Daddy, this wedding is tomorrow. 
And as she told me this morning, I told her, it will not hold. She said, but that this thing is already sealed. The man is coming for the bed. I said, it will not hold. And as she told me, I told her, I send a blast to the man right now. He will hear a news that he will not come for that wedding. The next few days after she told me, Daddy, as you said it, it happened. I said, she said, as you said it, it happened. He said the next day the man came to meet us. He started begging, apologizing to me. Please, he doesn't want to get married again. That she had, he had a dream and he saw a man in his dream. And the man told him not to get married. That's what we're talking about here. This is what we are talking about. Somebody gave us a, 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 legal, a, a, a letter from his, let, from his lawyer and gave us 14 days and said we should comply with something, something. As they gave us the letter, my wife, Pastor, said, she said, I gave him 14 days. In less than 14 days, pressure came on him. He, he started calling us, using the people to call us. 15 days, 16 days, he started begging me to come and take my money. That's what we're talking about here. That's the generation that the earth is waiting for. You get what I'm saying? First Corinthians 4 verse 20 says, for the kingdom of God is not in world, but in what? Power. Power. We are ending this crusade with the revelation of power. Because what happened to us in 2020 is a proof that we're, we're, we're devoid of power. The church of yours was power dry. That's why they could toss us like this. But we have to enter 2021 mad on power, high on power, so that even the devil, when he sees us, he will take another route. Yes. Power is all that settles the matter. When actions, that is the acts of the apostles, which is miracles, signs, and wonders, proofs, which is the resurrection power of Jesus, and power, which is healing, deliverance, signs, and wonders, every manifestation of the supernatural, are out of the church and the message we preach, we, no, we are no longer Christians, and we no longer preach the gospel. We are just some set of talkers. We are just some set of talkers. We have seen God show his power in this location where we are. Like, like never before, we received threats. And at the end of the day, those who threatened us were the ones who fell for our sake. In the previous mission location we, where we were, when a great principality came, it came against us, the same God that we serve and the power of God was made to manifest, they fell for us. So I'm telling you, if you want to thrive, if you want to soar as a child of God, you need raw power. Raw power. These are the days of raw power. I thank God for the teaching ministry, but I think we need to inculcate more in, in more of power now because the times are getting more dangerous. The times are getting more dangerous and we have to be aware of these truths. The times are getting more dangerous. Somebody said something, he said, we need more of the power of God now than even the times of the Acts of the Apostles. Because the kind of satanic operations in our times are high-tech operations. They are scientific, demonic operations. In the time of the Acts of the Apostles, they were not doing coronavirus. They didn't have Ebola virus. They didn't have them. But now we are dealing with forces like Ebola virus, coronavirus. These forces are not, are not, <laughs> they are not child's play. They are demonic, scientific operations. So we need, we need to upgrade our power level to deal with them. So the power we have to the apostles, we are still celebrating acts of the apostles. But see, we need to upgrade higher than that. Because in their time, they didn't have the, they didn't fight with the, demo, with the demons we are dealing with now. They didn't have coronavirus, they didn't have Ebola virus, they didn't have all these viruses we are seeing here and there. You need high level power to deal with this, praise God. What is the kingdom of God? First Corinthians 4 verse 20 says, For the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. The kingdom of God is in word, power. So the kingdom of God is in the manifestation of God's power. The kingdom of God is the power of God at work in the life and operations of the children of God. So listen to me, child of God. I know that we have been through quite a lot, but this is the time to build up power base. Because the devil is not folding his hands. We are not afraid of the wiles of the devil. But we just have to make him know that we are in charge here. And you know what I'm saying? The devil needs to know that we are... See, he needs to know that we are the boss. The kingdom of God is in the power of God. That's where it's inside. It resides. It resides in the power of God. Are we together? It resides in the power of God. And we learn that Jesus is the kingdom of God. And Jesus resides in the power of God. That's what the Bible says. And that, if that same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, shall, then he shall quicken your mortal bodies. That spirit is the power of the most. And that's the spirit, Holy Spirit of God. We need the power of God. We need to be in the power. This is not a time to be, to be staying in and out of the power. This is the time to just live in the power of God. Amen. Totally dwelling in the power of God. High, high tension power. 
high tension power like never before. What is the power? What is power? The, 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 the Hebrew word for power in Ecclesiastes chapter 8, verse 4, there is a word, is, is a word, shilton. And shilton means mastery. It means mastery. And then the, 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 the Greek word for the word power in 1 Corinthians 4, verse 20, which we examine, is the word dunamis. And it means strength, ability, and inherent power. Power residing in a thing by virtue of its nature. It means force. It means power for performing miracles. It means moral power and excellence of soul. It means the power and influence which belongs to the riches and wealth. It means power and resources arising from numbers. It means power consisting in or, reside, or, or resting upon armies, forces, and hosts. It means might. So, is it, so we're talking about power here. What does power mean definitely then? Power is what? Mastery over life. Mastery over life. Over life. John G. Lake in his time, it, 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 um, there, was a, there was a virus and people were, were, were dying and these health workers were wearing safety devices, PPE, to carry the, the people who had, been, who had died by virtue of the virus. And John G. Lake was using his bare hands to do what? To carry these people, these dead bodies. And they were asking, are you normal? How can you be doing this? No, it's wrong. Wear PPE. Don't do that. And he told them, let me show you what kind of life I have in me. And he told them, Give me, bring, a, bring the virus and put it on my palm. And they put the virus on the palm. And they used a microscope to look at the virus. As they put it on his palm, the, the virus started dying and died on his palm. Yeah. Low that is what we are talking about, child of God. We have become so chicken-hearted as children of God that we give scientific explanations. And we use science to explain the Bible this time around. We don't use the Bible to explain science. <laughs> We give scientific explanation for scriptural revelation nowadays. And as a result of that, the devil says, let them keep explaining science while we keep dealing with them. And you get what I'm saying? We need high tension power. The devil is getting out another plan for 2021, but we need high tension power. We need men who will go to their prayer closet and pray like never before. And there will be masters over life. I remember the story about, about John Knox who prayed, Lord, give me Scotland or I die. And they Ask the Queen of England, who what do you fear the most? Is it the army of America? Is it what do you fear? And she said, I don't fear the American army. Neither do I fear the army of Germany. I don't even fear a thousand battalions of the of, of, of the army of the of, of, of England. He said, but I only fear one thing. I fear the prayer of John Knox. It was said that when John Knox goes on his knees to pray, Buckingham Palace will be shaking. It will be vibrating. He prayed till he dug a hole in his prayer closet on the floor where he needs to pray. His new dog holes, the dog two holes there. And he kept on praying one prayer. Lord, give me Scotland or I die. It is believed that he prayed till his heart shaking and he died. Man of power. Only one decree passes and the whole nation is, 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 is quaking. Once uh, the, 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 the Nazi army was supposed to attack uh, the, 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 uh, their country, and while everybody was afraid, John Knox just went to his prayer closet. As he prayed, he told the queen, it will not happen. Like play, like play. They went to another place. Are you getting what I'm saying? Now? This is the generation that we are crying for. Generations that have mastery over life. Not generation that have mastery over their pocket. The Lord has given me a new car. The Lord has given me a new house. That is what we call power now. The Lord has given me money. My family is all fine. No, 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 no. Those things are good. But with all the new car, look at what coronavirus did to us. With all the new house, look at what coronavirus did to us. With all the so-called miracle, we call miracle. Look at what coronavirus did to us. It's time for us to wake up and say that this thing is beyond us. It's about life. Mastery over life. We have to start dictating. How can some people sit down together and they make up their mind? They sit down in their clothes and they arrange themselves and they say they will wipe out a particular race. What nonsense! They wake up and they say they sit down and they say, "Okay, these are the number of people we want to be on the earth." Were they the ones who created the earth? 
that they will determine who will be on the earth. The reason why this happened is because of the book of Ecclesiastes that says there's an evil I've seen on the land. For what? Slaves are riding on horses and princes are trekking. When slaves begin, begin to determine the, the, the events of the earth, is because the princes have chosen to what? To trek and sleep. We have been trekking and sleeping. Child of God, like never before, the earth is calling for us now. The expectation of the creation is crying. And he said, we need you back. Mastery. Mastery over life. Power is forced applied to cause changes. This is going to be very well. We need, you see, in 2021, we need to apply force to cause changes in the atmosphere, in the cosmos, in the, in the environment, in everything. We need to apply force. Power is God's giving ability to perform miracles. We need to start. See, this is not for pastors and men of God alone. And one of the things that God has blessed my ministry with is that anybody who stays under my mentorship for a, 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 just even three months and you are serious, the same order of miraculous that God makes me command, you command it. You command it. Why? Because this science is for, is for everyone. Everyone. We need to see the devil has to see some kind of miracles that will keep his mouth ajar. And it will be done. Well, I remember the story by a particular man of God. He said there was one day a native doctor came to meet him and said, please tell your, your pastor to give me back my, my charm, my juju. He said, your pastor. He now called all of you and said, please, which your pastor took his charm or a juju or whatever? And the pastor said, none of us took his juju. They did, they did, they did for that investigation and discovered that it was not... In fact, the native doctor was even saying, the problem now is that if that charm or that juju stays more than three days with anybody that takes it from me, the person will die. He said, but the issue now is that I keep seeing the guy. It's more than three days now. The guy is still passing my shrine. <laughs> no, in fact, I've seen that he's living better. I said, nothing is happening to him. Please, I've come to bear for him to return my juju back to me. And they say, okay, who is the pastor? The pastor, uh, senior pastor, asked, who is the pastor that took it? They investigate. No pastor agreed that I took it. So they went for that to investigate. And they discovered that it was not a pastor. It was the head, it was an, a, 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 it was the head usher. Ah! And they said, please call the head usher. When they call the head usher, you are the one who took it. He said, okay, so what is the condition you gave the native doctor for him to collect the juju bag? He said, I told him that for him to collect it, you should bring 50 tana. I said, ah, 50 tana is too small now. Native doctor, eh, see, for this matter now, you pay 150 thousand. <laughs> so they sat down and they started the native doctor. The guy came to beg for his juju. That is the kind of power we are, we are, we are looking for. Where we intimidate the devil. You look for the devil and intimidate him. Praise God. It talks about morality and excellence of soul. Today we see Christianity and a lot of Christians. I live in, we, 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 are, we, are, we are in a location where when you call Christians, you're just laugh because if when you talk about no ethics, Christianity, when you talk about uh, um, 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 low standards, Christianity, mediocrity, Christianity, no integrity, Christianity. So when they call Christians nowadays, I believe those people, they are just playing. There was once a particular company in the U.S. came out and he said, the Christians in the U.S. are not serious. Wow. Why? Because they look at us and we see that morality is zero. Excellence is zero. No standards. But power is high level morality and excellence. It means the effects of riches and wealth. Uh, we are still crying for riches and wealth as children of God. Many of us are still praying for riches and wealth. But with the after part that we're not supposed to pray, the effect is meant to be felt. Yes. How many of the money you have made has affected your society? Uh. All you have is the investment. You are securing and securing and securing. But nobody is feeling the effect. The world is not feeling the effect. Why the children of darkness are giving to charity? You, you are giving to your pockets. Mm -hmm. Your immediate family cannot even feel it that you are saying you are being blessed. Blessed what? You are, you are just... You are just managing. And the church has to wake up to understand that the world has to start seeing the effect of our wealth. Mm. Yeah. They see how they see how to beg you to give to those who are in less privileges. Only on your birthday, you go, you go to the motherless baby zone to go. Only on your, you even, some people don't even go to their birthday. Just pack the thing inside our pockets and we just keep eating and we're traveling abroad. That is not what God has called us to do. That's not the power of God. That's not the power of God. The power of God is when you can lend to nations. Mm. I heard the story about the particular man of God. He came to preach in a particular African nation. And after finished preaching, the president came to meet him and said, please, man of God, pray for us. He said, what do I pray for you for? He says, we are in serious debt. Pray for God to help us to pay our debts. And he said, all right. 
He wanted to pray for the man. Then he wanted to pray for the president. Then he asked the president, he said, How much you owe? The president told him, How much you owe? He told his PA, Give me my checkbook there. The PA gave him his checkbook. And he wrote a check to the tune of that money. And he gave it to the president and said, Pay your debt. The president said, What? Thank you, my Lord. He said, Well, that's not on you, Dan. And the, the president said, and he put his hand on the president and said, Lord, today I fulfill your word that says, I shall lend to nations and not to guru. Simple. That was holy prayer. That's what we are talking about. Well, where we intimidate the devil. There's a, there's a level of wealth where we determine people's religion, in quotes. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes. <laughs> and about, another definition of power here is the effect of numbers. Where the devil cannot stop us again because we are becoming too much. Mm. We, are, we are spreading like wildfire. And we, then we, the effect of an army of hosts. We have now become an army that the devil is intimidated by. This means that Christianity must be characterized by all of these definitions above for the kingdom of God to be seen and felt by humanity. If these things do not characterize Christianity, the earnest expectation of the creation will still be waiting. Sometimes I just begin to think and I say, God, when will this glorious church come up? That's one of my greatest cry, the glorious church. Where the world will be intimidated by us. And they have no other option than to come to us. The Bible says, and in that time, seven women shall cling to the skirt of a man, of one man, of one Jewish man. And they shall say, give us neither food nor water. Let us just bear thy name. That is a prophetic inclination of the church. That man there is symbolic for the church. And the seven women there, they are symbolic for the seven continents of the earth. They shall cling to the church of Jesus and say, we, it's not like now that all they come to is come and collect money, come and collect miracles. Now that time, if you get to that level, they say, do not give us anything. Just let us bear your name. But this will only manifest when the church of Jesus manifests in the fullness of God's power. Are we together? And so we have to wake up to this. We have to wake up to this. See, mastery is something I want us to take note of. Mastery is what? Mastery is, is, is knowledge and skill that allows you to do, use, or understand something very well. That's the very definition, definition of mastery. Knowledge and skill that makes you what allows you to do, use, or understand something very well. How many of us have masteries in life as children of God? If this is the cry for the end time church, to be in complete control of the nations of the earth. See, let me tell you something. I, I listened to a, um, a man of God. He said, huh, why Christians pray whenever they want to pray? Other religions, they are, they, are, they, are, they are religious about their prayer hours. Why? Because they are not praying for things. They are actually praying for the complete takeover of the world. But the Christians are praying for their needs to be met. My pockets, my family, my house, my life. And that's the reason why, why others are, cry, are praying for complete takeover. We are not yet in the takeover plan. But the church of Jesus has to wake up to the takeover plan. Amen. Amen. And this will come when we begin to crave for mastery over the things of this life. Knowledge and skill that allows you to do, use or understand something very well. We need mastery. We need to have mastery in every facet of life now. In, 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 in politics, in economics, in, 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 in um, medical, health, and, uh, and social health facilities, in every facet of life, Christians have to enter there and have mastery so that we can take charge. Because this is the era of the church. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Knowledge and skills are two vital mediums through which we take delivery of God's provision. Proverbs 11 verse 9 says, But through knowledge shall the just be delivered. And John chapter 8 verse 32 says that you shall know the truth and the truth shall do what? Shall make you free. This implies that it's only the truth you know that sets you free. As both the Old and New Testament emphasize the freedom that comes by the truth. Praise God forevermore. Hallelujah. Amen to Jesus. So when we have knowledge of the word of God concerning every aspect of our lives, we enjoy the provision of God's kingdom in every facet of society. What is God saying for every facet? We need, we are not talking about prophet now. There was one prophet that prophesied. All that prayer. No, 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 no. We need prophets in the scientific world now. Are you getting what I'm saying? We need prophets in healthcare. We need prophets in politics. When I'm talking prophets, I mean Christians who know what God is saying in their political jurisdiction, in their health, health, in, in, in their medical environment. In the economics, they know what God is saying. Are you getting what I'm saying? 
I learned that Denmark is one of the most stable countries in the world. Why? Because the country is run by one party, and that party is called Christian Democratic Party. If you are not born again, Holy Ghost speed, demon casting, devil chasing, tongue speaking, you won't get there. If you are not living holy and righteous, you won't get there. That is what we are looking for, child of God. Not the, you see, nowadays we are even afraid when we say Christians to enter politics in God because when they enter, what we see at the end of the day is <laughs> another ball game mentality. But we need Christians who are prophets in every area where they are, controlling the factors there, making decrees, making decrees in the economics, making decrees in, 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 in the educational sector. We need Christians who will take charge of the cosmos. In Daniel chapter 9, verse 32, after Daniel prayed for 21 days, God answered him by giving him skill and understanding. And this is the same thing God answers and blesses us with. Skill and what? Understanding. You are praying for miracles. You are praying for miracles. We need skill and understanding. See, when you have skill and understanding in politics, you enter there, you begin to perform miracles. Yeah. When you have skill and understanding in the medical field, you enter there, you begin to perform miracles. Yeah. The first black uh, neurosurgeon was his name again, uh, 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 Ben Carson. That was a miracle worker with skill and understanding. We need it. We need power now. When we ask God for provisions, he gives us skill and what? Understanding. Praise God forevermore. And skill means intelligence. It means to be an expert. It means to be wise. It means understanding. It means guidance. It means prudence and good success. So when we are praying with divine skill, we enjoy God's provision. And we have complete control over things in life. When you have adequate knowledge of who you are in Christ, it reflects on everything you do. Are you getting what I'm saying? And everything around you submits to your revelation. But if you don't have enough revelation of who you are in Christ, things around you will suppress your revelation. Confusion and anxiety, fear comes into your life where you are in, in where you have inadequate knowledge about the situation. But when you have adequate knowledge, you are confident. Nothing shakes you. Nothing moves you. Today we see a world where there's so much confusion. There's so much chaos. We see people committing suicide because of the news of coronavirus. The reason for that was anxiety, lack of information. But we need people who will step into every sector as people carrying the fire of God. And they cause things to happen yes. because they have what? The relevant information and the relevant revelation. Mark chapter 4, verse 37 and 8. When Jesus was in the boat and the storm was driving against the boat, what did he do? Jesus was at peace. Why? Because he knew who he was and he knew what was happening around him. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes. So he was at peace. We need to know who we are and we need to know what's happening around us. And this only comes by the revelation of God's power in us. When he stood up, he just spoke peace, be still, and that was all. That was all. So when we know who we are in Christ, and we know the power domiciled in us, and we know the word of God at work in us, every opposing situation and challenges, they become child spirit to us. And with that, we are always at peace. And we can easily address situations without thinking twice. Praise God forevermore. Hallelujah. This is what the end time church is to be characterized by. And the only way we enjoy God's provision in this end time is when we do what? When we function in divinely inspired knowledge and skill. We function in divinely inspired knowledge and skill. Divinely inspired. That's the power of God fully at work. That's the power of God fully at work. And when we do this, you know what happens to us? We enjoy dominion in every sphere. In every sphere. See, imagine if every child of God begins to walk in this revelation of God's power in every location. Let's just say 10,000 Christians walk in this, in this revelation of God's power. This earth will begin to, we begin to rejoice. Yes. The earth is still growing. The creation is still growing because we, we are not manifesting this power. The earth is crying for us to manifest. The earth is, is, is waiting for us to manifest the power of God. Child of God, the time of theories and arguments are past. This is the time of practical manifestation of the power of God. Lift up your voice this moment and say, Father, let your power, Father, let your power 
be at work in me. Let it burst out from the inside of me. Let my environment feel your power. Let my locality feel your power. If you know that word is a word for you, can you go ahead and pray to the Lord now? No more theories. Lege de manifestation. Retukum bilati kadibali koti barata ya. Yedele bebele babada bosha. Let the kingdom of God be felt through me. Let the earth in my in, under my feet feel the impact of God by virtue of my presence. Yedula katabiata ibrato sekete lebada. In every field where children of God are, let them feel their impact. Let the power of God erupt in us. Let the power of God erupt in us. In the sciences, let the power of God erupt in us. In medicine, let the power of God erupt in us. In economics, let the power of God erupt in us. In, us. in, 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 in every facet of life, in politics, let the power of God erupt in children of God. Let the earth begin to feel our presence. Let the earth begin to feel our impact. Enough of stories, enough of, 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 of we being talked down on. But Lord, let the power be manifested now. This is the last day of this crusade. And we cry for power. We cry for power. In every face, let us make impact. In business, let us make impact. In manufacturing, let us make impact. In technology, let us make impact. In the control of the, 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 the finances of the nations, let us make impact. Let the church of Jesus come back to the place of power. Pray if you can pray, because this is what we need to take charge of this world. Even as we enter into 2021. In my field, Lord, give me power. Make me an authority. Let that be your prayer. In my field, make me an authority. Let in my field make an authority I choose not to be a talk again I choose to be a man of few words but many actions let that be your prayer make me a man that releases infallible proofs. Make me a man who does before I talk. Make me a woman who releases infallible proofs. Make me a woman who does before I talk. Come on, that should be your prayer. As I enter into 2021, let the earth feel my presence. Let my locality know that the Son of God is here. Are you talking to God at this moment? Power, Lord, let power erupt from the inside of me. Power, let power erupt from the inside of me. Power, let power erupt from the inside of me. We need miracles in the sciences. We need miracles in technology. We need miracles in economics. We need it. We need it. We need it. We need it. And only the children of God can do this. Power, power. In the name of Jesus, we have prayed. Now I'm going to be praying for every one person who is under the sound of my voice, or if you don't understand the sound of my voice, and you've not made Jesus your Lord and Savior. See, you cannot enjoy this power. So I want to pray this prayer for you and to do it with me. And I trust God. And after this, you begin to enjoy the power of God. Lord, I pray for now. now say this prayer to me, dear Lord Jesus. I know I'm a sinner, but today I come to you. I choose not to follow the devil any longer. I choose to make you my Lord and 
personal savior and to follow your duties of my life. Jesus, you are now my Lord and savior. I am born again in Jesus. And Lord, I pray for every one person who has made this prayer or who will make this prayer. I pray for the grace to follow Jesus on the days of their life. Be released upon them in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord, because I know these words shall manifest your power in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Now, please, this is the last day of this crusade and what a glorious way to end the crusade. Please, this message is a serious message for the church of Jesus, for everyone Christian. Don't just stop in this prayer point we have prayed. Keep praying it after now because in 2021, one, the church has to emerge. Yes. The glorious church has to manifest. Yes. As a church, as a denomination, we have been praying for, for revival. And let me tell you something, this end time revival is not just going to be a revival that people will come to church like the other great 10, I, I studied on the 10 greatest revivals that are happening and the great awakenings. The, this end time revival is going to take a new face. This end time revival is not going to be people coming to church to come and pray and to come and cry unto God. This revival is going to be Christians moving from their houses to their offices and things are happening in their offices. Amen. It will happen in politics. It will happen in economics. Amen. It will happen in science. Amen. It will happen in the medical field. Amen. It will happen in every field. Christians will take the power of God to their field Amen. and they'll begin to cause things to happen in their field. That is how this end time revival is going to happen now. I have never said this before when I've been teaching the word of God, but this is a short prophetic word from God. This is how the end time revival will happen. So we must all be on fire. You have to go to your office and set it ablaze for Jesus. Go to your place of work, set it ablaze for Jesus. This revival is a revival that is locomotive. It's not restricted to a location. So it may not happen in a church building as it were. It's happening in the church, which is every one of us. Yeah. And it will happen when we begin to crave for this power. Amen. Some of us will enter into our offices and as we are entering, the people are slain under the anointing. Amen. As we enter into our office, our, our diabolic boss is saying, what, what's happening? Please, I, I, I need to know Jesus. Amen. We get to a level where people, we don't need to preach again. As we are stepping into environments, people are crying for Jesus. Amen. That is the level of revival that is, that is coming. And we have to prepare for it. I trust God that you are blessed. And this will not just be the last. I trust God for you to keep on this prayer. And I know that as you keep it on, you will see this manifestation of the power of God in your life and in everywhere that everywhere you go to in the name of Jesus. Amen. Please, the giving channels have been made available to you. Please make sure you give. And I trust God as you give, the Lord will bless you. This is the last day of the Go Forward Crusade. We thank God for the success of this crusade. It has been the most exciting time. Yes. And in this month alone, by the grace of God, um, I have preached over 16 messages and I thank God for the grace to have done this. Amen to Jesus. Mm -hmm. We are just getting warmed up because the next program coming up is our commanding the new year. Mm -hmm. That is for January 2021. Mm -hmm. Every Tuesday, Wednesday and Friday is going to be hot prayers and going to be hot prophetic releases. 2021 must submit to us. Mm -hmm. It has no other option than to submit to us. Mm -hmm. And so we are already getting set for it. And I trust God that in 2021, I will hear from you the great things that God is doing in your life in the mm -hmm. name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Thank you everyone for joining in. Thank you for being a part of this. And I trust God that the blessings you have released, you have received shall last forever in the name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you and grace to you. Amen.